Should we get the feedback that people spent most of the time at the beginning of any presentation I give finding out where the accent is coming from? So, um, my first name is Dutch. I've, I've lived most of my life in southern Scandinavia. My husband is English, and my son is Scottish, and I am German. So, that um, brings them all together, um, but the, the accent comes from most of, 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 uh, of, of many places. Um, uh, the, the, the speaker's um, um, instructions actually said that the presentation should be thought-provoking and, um, and provocative, which, which I thought might be um, a bit of a contradiction if you instruct the civil servant to, to be that. But uh, I was very grateful to present um, after Dominic because um, he presented a lot of very interesting um, information. And I, as a, as a policy staff in the Scottish Government, feel that I'm really spoiled to have that vast amount of research going on, which is really tailored specifically towards supporting policy development. And, uh, and I really think that we, we need to congratulate those people in the Scottish Government who have been pulling all the right strings to make this huge resource uh, available to enable uh, policy to be um, evidence-based in, in the Scottish Government. In, in the presentation um, uh, today, I, I flicked through some, some slides quite, quite quickly, but I thought I'd put them up so that you have some, some reference, uh, re re references to um, uh, some documents. <clears throat> I um, mostly focus on, on agriculture and climate change today because that's uh, the area where I have responsibility for um, in the Scottish Government. Uh, it just really, we hear a bit more details about the Scottish Climate Change Act. But, but really just to um, say again that we have a very important uh, uh, target, statutory target, not only for 2050, uh, that target applies for the whole of the UK, but the Scottish Climate Change Act specifically sets a target for 2020 of 42%, and uh, that is really very much that, that helps us focus uh, our efforts at the moment, and, and really uh, is quite challenging uh, for us in, in shaping policy. And, and lest we forget, there's also um, a bottle of whiskey being produced, uh, 42% proof at 2020. And um, some, some of my colleagues have said we, we might all be at the bottle um, by, by the time we come closer to 2020. But uh, I think that uh, can be seen. Um, uh, just a, a bit more of a detailed slide, um, Dominic showed a, a similar one. Um, you can see the Scottish emissions broken down into uh, various uh, sectors. And uh, you can also see that the targets that we, um, that we need to get to by 2020 and 2050, it's only that much, so it can't be that difficult. Um, just really to say for, for those um, who want to read a bit more about our detailed programmes in place to reach those targets, uh, there is a report on pro proposals and policies uh, available on the web which is um, uh, not just a carbon reduction plan, but a low carbon future project that sets out the, the detailed background for, um, for all the various policy areas. Uh, for my specific responsibility, um, agriculture and climate change, farming for a better climate is a behavior change initiative uh, that we work uh, together with SAC on to actually help uh, Scottish farmers adapt to a changing climate, but also to um, mitigate emissions from agriculture. So um, if, if you have some spare time, just uh, log into that web page and you see quite a lot of information uh, about the causes, impacts of climate change, actions that, that you can take, and uh, specifically also some, some case studies that show practically what can be done. Uh, farming for a better climate um, promotes um, uh, measures uh, to be taken forward on the farm in five key areas. You can see them all here, I won't mention them in, in detail, but really just to say that the um, financial savings that can be had through all of the measures that we're promoting are really key. And we really focus on promoting the low-hanging fruit. That doesn't mean that Scottish producing fruit in the future only, but just to say that there are some easy uh, actions that farmers can take uh, that help the farm business, uh, but also help to reduce uh, greenhouse gas emissions. And uh, when you remember the um, marginal abatement cost curves that um, 
uh, Dominic's slide, uh, Dominic showed earlier on, a lot of the um, most cost-effective abatement measures are actually in the area of nitrogen management. And it is specifically the nitrogen efficiency measures that we focus on because they also have a wider range of cross-cutting benefits for other policy areas. And that is quite important because in everything that we promote in terms of uptake to, uh, from, of measures uh, to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, we mustn't forget that focusing on reaching the climate change targets only might lead to perverse outcomes. So we really need to look at the cross-cutting effects of everything that we're promoting and focus on those actions that actually have benefits in other areas rather than negative trade-offs. Um, uh, these are our climate change focus farmers. We have put in place uh, a nominated uh, climate change focus farms throughout Scotland which will demonstrate practically um, during farm events the uptake of uh, the measures um, um, on the farm and also demonstrate what business benefits can be had. So um, this, taken, uh, this photo was taken at the outset of, uh, of the, the three-year programme and they're all still smiling so you can just wait how they look after the, the three years. I hope they are all still smiling and I'm fairly sure that we'll be able to actually prove with the farm data that uptake of climate change mitigation measures and specifically also adapting to the changing climate will have had farm uh, business savings. Um, the, um, there's a vast range of, of research in place, and Dominic already uh, told you about that. I don't want to go into detail other than just saying specifically there is a need to improve the greenhouse gas inventory uh, where it covers agriculture because it is a area with great uncertainty, and we need to reduce that uncertainty to be much surer and much more aware where the um, greatest sources are and what the most cost effective measures. Uh, can be to mitigate those sources. Um, looking specifically about how um, uh, the future um, uh, impact of climate change will be in, in Scotland, I've just put this map up, which is a climate map of, of Europe in 2080, using the high emissions scenario. Um, I've been uh, given that by John Gilliland, the uh, chair, ex-chair of the World Climate Change Forum, and I don't really want to focus on whether this map projects the climate correctly or not. What I really want to um, make clear on this slide is that the amount um, that our climate could change 